Welcome to Design Thinking Games, a gaming and user experience podcast. Card-carrying UXers Tim Broadwater and Michael Schofield examine the player experience of board games, pen and paper role-playing games, live action games, and video games. Play through the backlog on your podcatcher of choice and on the web at designthinkinggames.com. Design thinking <laughs> is a process that is used to understand users, challenge assumptions, redefine problems, and create innovative solutions. In this podcast, we apply design thinking to gaming. We were going to talk about Stray. We both have beat the game. It's just out. But then we've kind of had some buzz about, like, what are some thoughts here soon are the predictions Ooh. for Game of the Year awards. And I know we have some feelings about if Stray is going to get nominated for some awards or all awards or whatever. But the criticism that the Game of the Year awards gets is because the video gamers only – their votes are only, like, 25% or 10% of the yeah. deciding factor. And so – no, you're like, shut the fuck up, stakeholder. Get in your lane. It's essentially just like, you know what? This is our award ceremony. We're awarding it. We have, we do this shit every year. I, I mean, we definitely want to hear from you, but, you know, uh, you're not the deciding factor. You know, there's many deciding factors. So I know that's criticism that it gets. No, it's, it's, it's totally right. Like, and generally, I'm on the side of like the gamers here, but. I think, like, here, here's my prediction. I think Stray is going to get a Game of the Year nominee. Mm -hmm. I think it has a good chance of winning because of its, its press is great. There's a lot of great things about it. But I don't think it, I don't think it's, I don't think it's that high caliber, which I know is against the grain. And so in this case, I'm like on the side of the Academy, you know, like the people who actually know a little thing or two, I'm like fuck the gamers. <laughs> That's right. No, but, but no, I mean, um, it's, it's a great game. It's like really, it's really good. So there is a couple criteria that's worth mentioning for game of the year and stray that pertains and is relevant. Um, Game of the Year has to be decided before November. Like, the game has to come out before November, essentially. Um, that's one thing. But then, you know, the GameAwards.com, like, if you ask them about, um, you know, why don't the, flan why don't the fans 100% choose, right? I mean, they say there's problems there, and they're pretty, you know, mm -hmm. forthright and uh, opaque about it, that... You know, some games are exclusive to platforms. That's really not... Mm. So how, how can people vote on it if it's not even available for them, right? Right. Um, so if you're exclusive to a platform, um, that's <laughs> potentially disadvantageous. Um, uh, and they understand what happened in the election with Reddit, and they understand with Facebook, and, and so they definitely don't want socially engineered social media feedback or social, socially engineered kind of uh, swayed voting. Like manipulation, right. So that's, and they say, so that's why we do a blended vote. You know, that's why we do, it has input from it, but it's not solely from it. And so mm -hmm. Stray, however, is out on every platform. Let's say what we can say. It was like, yeah. um, the game has been out for a month. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> right? This is definitely a game that I think you should play. You play as a cat some three, four hundred years into uh, into some future. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. I like, think it's Earth's future. It definitely I think it's is. Earth's future. And you are effectively, um, you, you stumble into this kind of slum world of robots and neon signs and techno and um, and eighties like CRT monitors that is like devoid of I don't know if it's a spoiler it is devoid of human life. You're a cat, and you know what? For whatever reason, like you're the cat that's gonna save the day. Um, <laughs> you're the cat savior. 
Yeah, we, we talked about this a, a couple of episodes ago, or of last episode, where we were talking about just the game mechanics we love, and we're talking about simulations. And, it's, and this is an excellent cat simulation. You want to scratch on some curtains? You want to lay down and take a nap? You want to knock shit over? Yeah, and a bunch of weird spaces you can take naps, like where only a cat can fit, you know? Yeah, totally. So, um, so it's a cat simulation in a really here's how i was like trying to describe it um so to me this has strong like walking simulator vibes are you familiar with like gone home um oh yeah so a lot of people say that um death stranding yeah probably one of the it's i played and beat that game it is definitely a walking simulator yeah it's the idea you know you walk around you're like it's you're it's a cat simulator walking around and exploring this really cool world mm-hmm. and the story presented to you isn't so in your face uh, there's a there's a degree of discovery you know if you go and read everything or discover or rem- or you know remember everything or walk around enough mm-hmm. it begins to puzzle together things that just aren't you know given to you through like exposition and there is an ending and there's a and there is there is a a climax but in a way it's also just like a cat that day like a few days in the life of a cat in like some like really cool setting that you walk around and whether or not it affects the cat's life deeply at the very end like who knows you're just you know like all all in the all in the day of the life of a cat Design Thinking Games is a proud affiliate of Hunt a Killer. Enter the world of Hunt a Killer in their newest murder mystery season, Mallory Rock. This realistic murder mystery game delivers high quality, handcrafted evidence that brings a fictional case to life. Can you solve a mystery with Hunt a Killer? Go to designthinkinggames.com slash hunt a killer or click on the banner at the bottom of our website. It's not just, it is a futuristic sci-fi walking simulator mm. where you're playing a cat sim. I don't know if you've played Death Stranding. Um, there's a lot of notes that are very similar. This futuristic synth wave music that is like, oh, holy shit, am I in Blade Runner? Or am I, because that's the music feel, but then also kind of what you hear in dune like the soundscapes Mm, you know to mm -hmm. where a lot of the sound and just exploring is the story and understanding what happened right and it has this i will say what sticks out to me is like when you watch like a life-affirming movie something that just like it makes you feel something that it's maybe sad but it's also Mm -hmm. you know um it's teaching you something or, or it's making you feel something right um I feel that's kind of where this is. Um, And I guess not to spoil too much about it, but there is this, if you ever watched the old sci-fi movie, Logan's run, and I know I'm Mm. talking sci-fi movies here, which are like Logan's run or like um, blade runner, but it's that kind of feel of a game, but you're a freaking cat dude. And uh, you don't, you can't like combat per se, but it is this combination of like soundscapes and exploring and discovering and puzzles that pieces together what I think is actually a a very beautiful story that you kind of find Mm -hmm. out. The more you find out, the more clues, the more information, right? The trailer does show that you're a cat walking around and there's robots. There's robots. Yeah, exactly. Like one of the things that got like perfect I realize I might have just punned there, like per- perfect. Um, <laughs> like um, you have to do it like Earth and Kit, like perfect. Perfect um, <laughs> is the uh, oh my god is um, are sort of like the cat mechanics. Like there was one thing, like the highlight of my entire experience in this game is really early on, where um, as a cat. You, you bumble around and you find your way, you start getting uh, pointed in various directions by these monitors who are um, 
are trying to uh, communicate something to you. You are being watched through cameras. There's something in the network that is paying attention to you. And you discover that, oh my gosh, it's this kind of little cute um, uh, AI that transfers his consciousness to this little drone that's called B12, which I'm sure they're going to be plushies of, and I can't wait to have one. But you have like this little cute little like drone that uh, gives like hovers around, and they give you B12 gives you this harness, and you're a cat, and he puts the harness on you, and the cat like walk like for like the first like ten seconds is like walking around like dragging its stomach on the ground um, because oh my god it has a harness on it and it's just so like uncomfortable. Um, my cat like. Like I, I have an orange tabby, um, and anytime I try to put like a harness on him, he just like like lays down immediately. Or the only way he can he can he can only like belly crawl his like, way like around. They have the cat so perfect, um, and um, this was like my favorite moment. I like laughed out loud because I I just see this in my own orange cat like all this time, but. The, the sim is amazing. Um, I, I played on PC, and so like you had you had different buttons to to right paw, left paw, right paw, left paw to like to like smash things and stuff. And I got to tell you, it's a real it's real fun being a cat. Like I loved it. I was like, this is everything. Like I, you know, I I played it on PS5, and you you actually did this with the controller left and right. So it was like you're actually kind yeah. of yeah. And I actually just sent you an image of all of the cat cosplay that's already out there in existence of Stray. Oh my god, amazing. <laughs> and I don't want to spoil anything, but I, I would say that not spoiling, us saying it's future, it's sci-fi, humans aren't there, robots are, and you're a cat, I don't feel like that's spoiling. I think that's kind of almost what the trailer says. You actually end the game, I will say this, no spoiler, um, you don't know what's happened to the humans. I mean, you don't know if they've left or if they're dead or if they've moved on or left the planet because like the technology is so advanced, but then the technology has been left for hundreds of years that it's like, here's advanced technology that's been left around for hundreds of years. And so you have no idea, you don't know. You kind of start the game with, uh, what is a group of cats called? A litter? It is, maybe. A litter. Uh, yeah. You get separated from your litter, like very first thing in the game, right? And so you're kind of trying to get back to your litter, right? And so you don't know. And so you're experiencing kind of all this, um, but you cannot communicate with robots. And so you, to your point, you get a kind of like an assistant or companion, like a, a Navi to your Link or your, a Cortana to yeah. your Master Chief. That yeah. is this kind of robot, that, this flying little droid. And so you get all the story through your guide the whole time. And that, yeah. And, that, and dude, I can't even, like, it is so, I can speak to it on PS5. I'm sure it's just the same on everything, but it's so beautiful. Like, the game is really had like great art direction. And it's, and then the soundscapes and the music really good too and so i definitely think i'm not sure what awards i would say that it's up for but i definitely think it's and the fact that it's on every platform and it's a cat yeah. sim and it's all the things we described i think it's going to be up for something you know Guys, playtesting is hard. If you've ever done that, you know how much of a struggle it can be. And if you haven't, you need to. It's part of good game design. That's why I'm super happy that this season of Design Thinking Games is brought to you by Playtest Kit. Literally playtestkit.com, which is designed by Steve Bromley to help us draw reliable, evidence-based conclusions that inform our design decisions. It gives us all the templates and guidance that we need to test prototypes, types, recruit, pick the right method, interview people, write surveys, and most importantly, configure and analyze.
analyze the data so that we can do something useful with it. So whether you've never run a playtest before or you're a pro, this kit is going to save you time and help you get more value from each test you run. So sign up for free resources or go to get the full kit at playtestkit.com. And for the rest of the season, this season only of Design Thinking Games, use the code Design Thinking to get 10% off and let Steve know who sent you. I well, I think so. I think like um, you know, the the world, the world, like all every scene was so like meticulously crafted, um, so that. Again, like this really isn't like the Strays story, right? As you are experiencing the world that these people put together, well, I, I bet like there are just there's so many talking points there. The soundscapes are amazing. The structure of the world makes sense um, from you know from like Midtown to the slums, it being a physical like hierarchy. Um, the fact that they did build these like giant walled cities. The cities aren't named. They're just numbered. Uh, they had all this technology. Clearly at some point, this technology could have been used to leave the planet. That's something I didn't even like think about. Um, it is some hundred years or so, or several hundred years since the last human, at least um, that, 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 that any of the characters you encounter know of, or has, has been encountered. There's like some weird kind of like alien creature like down in the, especially down in the sewers where it's, I think it was the sewers, but like underground that is like really like grown out, like this kind of like biomass. And then of course you, you get the story of that. Yeah, oh, yeah, I think I, I think I got all the story there and I started developing, I don't know if I missed anything um, from my understanding here. like, But it makes you wonder, did I miss something? How many clues and memories did you unlock? Because I got 21 out of 27, and I wondered the same thing. I'm like, is this what happened to the humans? I think I got about, like, 22. And so, like, yeah, my, like, so I, I'm kind of interested to, like, hit up YouTube or whatever and look at, like, some um, think pieces. There's so much. I don't know. Like, I, I'm just, like, left with, like, questions. But what's, these are fun questions. These are, like, fun hypotheticals, which, again, we, we've talked so many times about, like, like so much of the success of like a great game, we always talk about, you know, the super massive games is kind of like the hallway conversation that happens around them. Elden Ring too. It becomes like a community event, like talking about all this different kind of stuff, all this different kind of lore, all these different what ifs. And yeah. Stray really like pushes that button. Elden Ring is, you. I almost forgot about it because, okay, so like, I could look at Stray, knowing that it came out on all the platforms and it's a new game. And Game of the Year has, or the GameAwards.com has 30 awards. That's it. 30 each year. That's what games are nominated for. And so Game of the Year, maybe. Stray, I don't know. Um, but there's also Most Anticipated Game. I mean, a lot of people, I've been looking at Stray since last year. Um, oh, they, really? Well, yeah, it was announced last year and it was just like hyped up. There's also like um, best art direction, which I could see best indie uh, debut indie game, right? Um, yeah. Best music score. I mean, so these are just some ideas about what it could be. But when I think of this year, and I think of Elden Rings, and I think of Horizon Forbidden West, um, I uh, to me those three games like stand out the most for like i don't know what you think i know one is a playstation exclusive which is the horizon forbidden west right. but it will probably go out like to other platforms it just takes a long time um strays on everything and then um elden i can't ring. remember what it was on was elden ring just pc and it's, mul it's multi-platform i think yeah um, like so 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 what does Stray do that's like truly unique? I think I think the world building, the art direction, A triple A, the sound design, triple A, the narrative, triple A, the hype and the marketing and like the like being a cat, like amazing, amazing. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the thing that like fell a little flat for me um, and like my only critique of the game, but I think it's an important piece of the critique is that Mm -hmm. um, I got, I found myself getting, I found it getting repetitive, right? Like, um, like I found it getting a little, I, I was starting to get a little bored, like being the cat. I, and I was motivated to see what the end of the story was, but many of the puzzles had the same elements to them. Walk around, knock something over, find a little plug, um, or like a power supply block thing. Um, uh, the the moment to moment of playing the game um, ran on a little too long, um, and I and I feel like I'm probably in the minority there. Mm-hmm. But the, the but like the you know many of the things I felt like like I don't know I just started seeing the pattern you know um, and then I couldn't I couldn't look away from the matrix you know I was like ah oh. like so it just started distracting me the more I saw it I actually didn't experience that I was really pissed off for no map there were places to where oh wow, you're right yeah so you're in like over the course of the game, there are places that you can only go one way for whatever reason, being chased or map or whatever story. But essentially, you're in like three different complex maps, three city zones or three places, right? And then the game actually requires you as a cat to remember where things are. And so my most troubling, the the thing that I dis that was the most irritating to me is did I check this corner? Did I go down this hallway? Shit, was I already here? And so I spent so much time. I feel like I could probably have beat the game in eight hours um, instead of 10 or 11 because some of, and the maps weren't that big, but you're a cat, you're small. And so, and you can climb up on every roof. You can go down every hallway. You can go, you can sneak into stuff. And so I just felt myself like, dude, give me a map, you know, just, I don't need you to point me to to waypoints of like where things are, but dude, at least give me a map so I can see where I'm at. But then I realized like, dude, you're a cat, a cat sim wouldn't have a map. So I don't know if that was, I would think it's intentional, but that was the only thing that I would say, you know, it it probably, you know, it were intentional. It probably was. I'm sure it was. Um, It forces you to explore. Right. And it forces right. you to see like the murals on the wall and it forces you to see like little signs and stuff. Um, but yeah, like there's there a there were plenty of times where I'm like, boop, 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 boop. I go over here because I couldn't figure it, figure out what to do. Like, because like where I had to go was like, like up a roof and over or something like that. And I just like, I just kept walking around. You're right. I didn't even think about some of the things like it really did have to kind of like a reduced HUD. I didn't even have a HUD at all, really, right? Like, it was like... You was like only not- would just trigger your guy to talk to you, and that's it. Sometimes you got a prompt, like, to, you know, like, oh, right mouse, left mouse to uh, to claw at something, you know? Um, Which is maybe but- why I enjoyed it and saw it more as, like, this really fun cat sim noticed more and listened more because there is no HUD and there is no map. Design Thinking Games is an affiliate of Space Engineers. Space Engineers is a sandbox game about engineering, construction, exploration, and survival in space and on planets. To find out more about Space Engineers or its new DLC, Warfare 2, go to designthinkinggames.com slash spaceengineers, or just go to our website and click on the banner. I don't know. I had not played Elden Rings. I know it was so hot, and I don't know um, if it's, you know, how it stacks. So I don't want to speak to it and say it's crap or not, you know. Um, I played Horizon Forbidden West. You should start Horizon by the time you get to the third game, even if it's translated over to Xbox, which the first one is. Yeah. you'll. It's worth playing it because it is an ancient futuristic 
Mass Effect. It's huge. It's got this. It's a trilogy, dude. It's just got yeah. this epic quality to it. And halfway through the second one, you're like, this is not going to be over this game. It's this big of a trilogy. It's this big of a story. So people are going to love it as an action sci-fi game. However, I'm not going to... I'm going to also make a prediction, which is here in a couple weeks. Um, Splatoon 3 drops for <laughs> for Switch. And dude, yeah. that is going to be probably the game online game of the year. Um, just because it is gangster hella fun. It is so enjoyable. And I don't know how it will not explode. Like, just because I've played hours and hours and hours of two. Yeah, it's really getting hyped up too. Like, and just like everybody who has a Switch, which is, I'm not going to say everybody, that's, but like lots of Switches out there, man. Like, everyone has good memories of Splatoon. Like, I never played Splatoon 2, but I played a lot of Splatoon 1, and that was fun. Like, so, like, it's just one of those things where, like, Nintendo comes out of there. Yeah, you know, it's just. It's one of those things to where Nintendo doesn't have a lot of great online games, whereas most other platforms have all on all the games are online, right? Yeah. However, and I'm not a, I, I can say I'm a fanboy. I'm not a fanboy. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence with Nintendo, to be honest. But when Nintendo does come out with online games, when it is like Mario Party and it is like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or it's like um, Super Smash Brothers or Splatoon 3, like they they get online right um, and people yeah. love it. So I don't know. What are your thoughts about uh, are there any other games that you played this year or know that are coming out at least in the next couple months to make the deadline that you think uh, game of the year? Or? Here, here's the hard part. Ever since I joined the PC Master Race, like I've been playing, like most of my backlog has been old games. And so like I actually feel more detached from this specific year than I have in a while. So I've been playing like I've been playing like older games. I will say a shout out to um, we've talked a little bit on the podcast about Tunic. I think Tunic is a phenomenal indie game that I recommended to you that uh, it could be up for some awards as well. I played it this year. It's out this year. It, a lot of people played it. It's on multiple platforms. You said November is when it... Uh... I think so. Like, okay. And then, of course, we've played like... We both played Vampire Blood Hunt. But I also know the other things that come to my brain that's like big releases this year. That Evil Dead game dropped this year that people yeah. like Synchronous Horror liked a lot. And I'm currently literally one hour and 10 minutes into Ghostwire Tokyo. Um, oh, how's that? That was on my uh, list. It is like this crazy future, but retro Japanese mythology kind of action adventure game that feels yeah. like um, Bioshock kind of, but it's got like Japanese mythology and the undead and so I don't know. I'm I'm intrigued though. In one hour what I've played is is pretty cool. So I'm just going to keep going. Um, I think it's uh, the story that's interesting to me more than anything else because um, I'm not a person who um likes first person shooters. I mean, I actually liked Bioshock because it was simple and I loved the story and You thought um, Bioshock was simple? <laughs> well, I mean it's I think I guess I think first person shooters are simple. Um Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um but I also know like there's another indie game that you shared with me last week, Cult of the Lamb. Um Dude, have you been seeing the press for that recently? Like people are like hooked on that shit. Yeah, so I love, as you know, for like Moonlighter was my suggestion for the game for you to play this year, and and Upper Alley, well, yeah, yeah, and last at the end of the season we'll talk about it, like your experience in playing it. But halfway through, you sent me Call of the Lamb, and I've been looking at it. I'm like, oh, it's very similar to Moonlighter, except instead of managing your own shop, you're managing a cult, <laughs> so, and you're the cult leader. So yeah, so it sounds like what we've identified is. Stray, Elden Rings, um, Horizon Forbidden West, and then Call of the Lamb. Those are the four that we're saying. <laughs> those are our predictions for like game. 
of the year. Is that correct? Maybe tunic. I don't know. Maybe tunic, but that's how. It, but that's more from my side, I guess, because I liked it. Same thing with like Cult of the Lamb. Like, like I don't know if that's going to be one of those things that um, that make it, um, or if it's caught our attention because that's the kind of shit we pay attention to. But let me tell you. Let me tell you. I'm I'm driving. Uh, I'm picking up my daughter from like school today. I've got NPR on because I'm the kind of parent who whose windows are down, broadcasting my allegiance, and <laughs> um, and and they start talking about Cult of the Lamb, and they're like, "There's it's like uh, like," and I think the headline was like, "It's like uh, it was like." Uh, Like uh, there, there's like uh, like uh, the holy debacle around the new cult or whatever was like the headline, and it turned out to be just like cult of the lamb. The, the fact that it's getting like NPR coverage um, because you have to go sacrifice your little cute sheep, you know. Like, and I guess like there's something where like oh my gosh, you really want them to like like you, so of course you have to like build them outhouses and you can do all the things, but sometimes serving. It's just a little too much. So what you could do is give them all magic mushrooms and then sacrifice one of them, and that's going to make them really worship you. <laughs> and that's, like, uh, as one does, you know. And and I feel like this is like, but they said like all of your la- all of your little lambs are individual. So like, if one person isn't high enough, like they might be unsettled by you sacrificing one of their compatriots, and they'll start like creating some sort of dissent. Thank you so much for listening to Design Thinking Games, <clears throat> the podcast where we apply design thinking to games. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how this episode turned out. We went on a ton of different tangents, but I hope you enjoyed it. There's a lot of really cool things coming up in um, our future, the future of the community here, like this fall, maybe with some things we can really talk about. Super excited about it. We would love for you to give us money um, through uh, a number of different ways. Um, Perhaps you heard one of our excellent ads. We put a lot of work into making sure that they work and that they convert. We record them ourselves and they're really affordable. You can find those at designthinkinggames.com slash advertise. Um, or if you wanted to join our many Patreons on Patreon, uh, you could go to patreon.com slash designthinkinggames where you have a backlog of every episode without ads. Um, and uh, I don't know, maybe if we actually get people over there, like you'll have access to some of this really cool stuff we're talking about in the future. You can find us on all the social media, uh, especially Twitter, a design th- a DTG Games podcast there. Just look for Design Thinking Games there, TikTok, Twitch. Uh, we're trying to have like a relatively reasonable presence. I, I'm not sure why I'm explaining to you, to your listener who's made it this far. Uh, We only have like a few more episodes this season. We hope you stick around to the end. They're going to get crazy good. Um, And then uh, we appreciate you being here. That was good. (laughs) Design Thinking Games. Thank you for listening to the Design Thinking Games podcast. You only have so much time, and it means a lot you shared it with us. To connect with your hosts, Michael or Tim, visit Design Thinking Games on TikTok, Twitch, and Twitter. DMs are open. You can also check out designthinkinggames.com where you can request topics, ask questions, or see what else is going on. Until next time, game on. Game on.